Ladies and gentlemen, I always strive to bring you the best. This program is your window of opportunity. Focus on South Asian community and keeping that focus, we are building bridges, especially between people of the book and true Judo Christian Islamic faith. Keeping that motto in our mind and keeping the tradition of this program for past 12 years on CTS Cable 9, Channel 36. I have a indeed honor. It's my real mm. honor and gives me immense pleasure to present to you very distinguished gentleman, Dr. Stephen Gill. And we'll talk to him how many books he has written for keeping the peace, tranquility, and brotherhood. Dr. Sub, welcome to our program. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bashir Khan. I appreciate that you have called me here. Uh, from Cornwall and I am here. I know that few years ago I was one of your, on one of your programs and uh, I am very thankful. I appreciate that uh, you have given me this opportunity to share my views, my philosophy, my way of thinking with your audience. Dr. Saab, you are well known in the community, in yes, the uh, yes, South yes. Asian community, mm -hmm. in Cornwall, Ottawa area. And I have the honor of knowing you. Oh, thank you. And uh, mm -hmm. sometimes you always was kind to call me and say, Bashir, your program is good. Mm -hmm. That's an encouragement yeah, yeah, over yeah. the years, yeah. people like yourself. You have won many international awards. Uh, you were giving um, Lifetime Achievement Award by South Asian Bible Church. Then you were giving an honorary doctorate degree. <laughs> Tell us a little bit, when did it happen and uh, what was the reason? It, was it based on the, all the work you have done? Uh, my award, actually I don't write for awards, uh, not for these recognitions. I write to share my way of thinking with others. And if somebody appreciates my writing or say something about that, actually that is my award. That, that's my recognition. That's what I like the most, because I write for sharing. That's my purpose. Uh, as far as awards are concerned, I can say they are encouraging, there is no doubt, you know, so they encourage a person. Uh, so these people, they come to know and they want to encourage me in some way, and uh, I'm thankful to them, but uh, I don't go for after awards, I don't care, you know. Your main ambition that. is to write a book. <clears throat> yeah poetry and so forth to reach out the hearts of the people around yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the I, think, I think that's the reason that uh, the uh, International Institute for Church Management from Florida, USA, honored you with the Doctor of Humanities. Yeah, this is the latest one. That's yeah. the latest one. Yeah. In addition to one you got before. Yeah, I, I have a yeah, few other uh, honorary doctorates. This is the uh, doctorate of humanities, but that I have deal it's also doctor of literature, PhD, some other, and a uh, few others. There are several, but I don't count because I don't write for writer. Uh, if I get Nobel Prize, that's a different thing, but again, <clears throat> I don't hanker after that, but uh, I feel that if I get Nobel Prize, Perhaps people will read my books and my message will go across. That's the main, main purpose. But otherwise, uh, as far as other awards are concerned, that's not my purpose. Purpose that, is writing. Dr. Sam, you have brought up a very good question. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, people such as Dr. Uh, Stephen Gill, there are many Canadians in, in uh, big numbers <laughs> who have done a tremendous achievement. But the government of Canada failed to recognize to really give them endorsement on international level. That is the responsibility, I think, government on provincial and federal level look into it. Dr. Saab, very recently you. you had mm -hmm. the honor of traveling uh, India, India, yeah. And uh, on the invitation of uh, literary circle yeah, there, yeah, and you exactly. were awarded again yeah, the yeah. Lifetime Achievement. Tell us a little bit about that trip. Well, there are two literary organizations uh, who invited me. Uh, one is uh, this was a conference of uh, international writers, a uh, three days conference. I was very happy uh, because most of the time it was three days. I never expected they kept me on the, uh, on the stage, uh, releasing books of others, uh, giving talks, presenting my poetry, uh, so uh, different things. Another one, that was conference of 
English teachers, or we can say professors in India. And uh, actually, they didn't uh, invite me when I was here, but somehow they came to know I am in, in India. And they tried to find where I am. They phoned my publisher, publishers somewhere else. They found out and they invited me there. And there were around 1,000 delegates. They were all university professors who knew me who taught about me to their students. And uh, really, I was pleased to receive love from those persons. In addition to this one, then Canadian High Commissioner, he came to know. Uh, I am there. And uh, he invited me for a lunch. He invited some other university professors from Delhi University, Jordan Nehru University. And uh, they were also there. And then Sheila Gujral, the wife of uh, Gujarat, ex Prime Minister of India, she came to know. And uh, they found out where I am staying through their contacts, and uh, they invited me. Uh, she was in, on oxygen, you know, not well, but uh, Sheila Gujarat is a writer. And uh, I was very pleased to see her that she came in that room with the oxygen with the nurse, uh, with a nurse and uh, her that husband. That the amount of respect. Yeah, yeah, respect. And uh, really we enjoyed. And uh, I just went there, but I tell you, Mr. Bashir Khan, that I was so happy to receive that love that those particularly among writers and intellectual life there. And uh, they, no, this book, the flame, I, I met the, that writer. This is my one poem about terrorism. And it's about 160 page poem. And this person, professor of English literature, he wrote a complete book on this book. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was so pleased to meet me, see me there. And that book is in the press. I'd like to ask you to uh, give a message to our viewing audience. And I want to thank you once again. Uh, you always uh, admired me as, oh, a, as you. a young man who is eager to build bridges, which I do. And I'm so grateful that I have the wishes and prayers. Celebrities like you, oh, uh, you. it is my thank fortune you. to have you. And I'm grateful to you for recommending me for this uh, uh, doctorate uh, degree well, you from some, it. There's no uh, doubt institution you. in yeah, the you world. You are very committed. Person. I salute yeah. you, sir, and yeah. thank you oh, very much yeah. for that recognition. Yeah. And uh, I would like you to give a message to our viewing audience. Well, my message as a writer, I am not giving message as a writer to other writers, but I want to say something because I was born in Sialkot in Pakistan and lived in India. And uh, what I feel that those regions of India and Pakistan and Bangladesh, they, they can do a lot for the world. Uh, there is only one thing that is lacking, and that is tolerance. There was not tolerance. That's why Pakistan came into existence. It is a, like a sword that divided India. Pakistan came into existence. Then there was no tolerance in Pakistan. Then Bangladesh came into existence. And the same, same sword we see that is flashing again in India and Pakistan and Bangladesh. And they should have tolerance. And that is the only way to save India, Pakistan, and other for further, from further fragmentations. And uh, I think that uh, tolerance is the only thing that can create peace. And peace is in the, in the interest of majority also, because if there is a peace, then enjoy, majority will also enjoy peace. And if there is a peace, then there is a prosperity. If there is no prosperity, then nobody is uh, happy. Even majority is no, not it happy. So it is in their interest to have democracy which is based on tolerance and it is in their interest to practice tolerance.